Today we are talking with Kate Bonk, uh, who basically climbed the ranks in higher education all the way down from like your first job as a student assistant all the way up to being a director of a program and a leadership uh, coach at some of the top institutions in this country. And then most recently you made a pivot into tech from higher ed. So I would love to just start with a question about, gosh, what was the most difficult part of making a transition out of higher ed into tech? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think um, I was lucky in that I had a nice long runway in which to, to look and it was a really nice opportunity for me to just you know, take a hard look at, you know, what are, what are the priorities? What do I want out of my career? Uh, you know, being, being in my mid thirties at the time, it was, you know, this is a hard point in which to, to make a pivot, I think. Um, so I would say the trickiest part was, you know, was coming in with kind of that like very mid-level experience of like, you know, I, I had a pretty high title in previous positions, um, but I, I know I needed to knew I needed to prove myself in a new industry. Uh, and so it was kind of finding that sweet spot of, you know, finding the right role that was going to be adequately challenging and exciting for me, um, but uh, low enough, I guess, on the totem pole at a new organization that, um, you know, they were willing to take a risk on somebody coming from a, um, a, a very non-traditional background um, compared to other people coming in. Absolutely. And I think, I, I feel like sometimes people see that program management role but the the titles in higher education might be different or like the people that you're interacting with, you know, might be different. Um, how, do, how do you see your role as a program manager now in technology in the learning and development space? Like how is it similar or how is it um, different to what you were doing in higher ed? Good question. I think, you know, the work itself is not drastically different. Um, you know, I'm still thinking big picture about the same types of things. It's about engagement. It's about retention of information. It's about, you know, keeping people engaged in, in programs, uh, getting people to learn new things and be excited about that. Um, you know, so from a, a you know, a, a high level perspective, like, that's not that different. Uh, I would say, you know, the environment is extremely different and just the pace of work is definitely different uh, as well as kind of the, the delivery function. I, you know, I'm now at an organization that's 100% remote. Uh, you know, it's an organization that's scaling. So, uh, you know, automation is, is really key. Um, and so coming out of an, or uh, coming out of higher education where, you know, relationships were, were a really big part of that. Um, I've had to make the shift to be a much more independent worker and um, be just very mindful of like how to, how to scale things in a, in a way that I had never had to do previously. So I would say, you know, the things I'm thinking about uh, programmatically are not different. How I'm thinking about it and how my work actually gets gets done, those are the places that are definitely different. And tell me a little bit about like if, if someone was new to program management or they didn't even, they were like, oh, I'm considering being a program manager. What are you doing on the day to day? So, I mean, a lot of it is, uh, you know, kind of just trying to think of what are the, what are the needs of the business right now and how does, you know, my little niche um, fit into that. Um, and so, you know, my focus where I am right now is on manager development. And so, uh, you know, the things that I think about, you know, I connect with various other partners are, you know, our HR business partners who have a, a nice line of sight into, you know, various different, um, cross sections of the business um, to see like, where are people struggling? You know, what do people need from a, a learning and development perspective? And then it's, you know, prioritizing, it's coming up with plans, it's getting feedback on, you know, here's what I think is, is maybe a need, like, can somebody help me uh, assess if that's, if that's accurate or not? Am I thinking about this in the right way? So it's a lot of, um, at this point, it's a lot of kind of developing, you know, potential plans, uh, you know, tweaking quite a bit based on feedback, um, you know, finding as many stakeholders to, to, to check in with. Um, and then it's, you know, once things kind of start rolling, then it's, you know, program development and delivery. And then, you know, where it goes from there is that automation piece. How do you, how do we make sure that this is, is scalable for, for a big organization? How do we make sure that this is not manual labor for, for anybody in terms of, you know, getting people enrolled in programs and things like that? Um, so it really goes from kind of like concept to delivery and then just kind of iterates from there. And I think the other cool part is that there is just a, um, I don't know, I guess just a greater possibility to just like try something out. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, doing things that are, um, 
you know, there, there's not a lot of risk, I guess, involved in, in the programs that I launch. Um, and so there's a, there's a really good opportunity to just say like, try this out, get some feedback on it and iterate. Um, and so I think that that's been a really exciting piece of it too. Mm, that's so cool. Uh, the other day I was talking to another program manager who made a pivot from higher ed to tech. And she was talking about the difference of when you're in higher education, sometimes you might come in and there's a program that's already established. So as a program manager, director of a program, you might be kind of taking something that already exists, but just like slowly iterating and improving on it over time. Um, whereas sometimes you're coming in building things out. So it sounds like the majority of your work, you're, you're focused more on kind of like building quick iterations versus something that's already been established for you walking into it. Yeah, that is definitely true. Um, I will caveat that with like the organization that I'm at is growing really quickly. Um, and so, you know, there's, I didn't come in with a ton of established programs already. Um, and I think, you know, a more established or, um, you know, larger company, that might not be the case. Uh, but for me coming into an organization that was just starting to enter kind of a hyper growth phase when I started, um, you know, the opportunities for, um, you know, for programs has just really like mushrooms in a, in a fun way. <laughs> Well, cool. yeah, I have so many questions from that. Like one, one other thing you mentioned in there is that you might be interacting with HR business partners, for example, right? <clears throat> when you're in higher ed, the people you might be interacting with for a program are often students, maybe faculty, might be administrators, or sometimes leadership of the school, of the university. When you're thinking about building out programs, like who, who are the players, who are the people that you're often talking to within within your company? Yeah, I think, you know, there's definitely the kind of user, like the user as a stakeholder piece. So, you know, I, I, my, my focus is on manager development. So that is like the population of managers. Um, and within that, you know, there, you can subdivide that in a, in a few different ways. Um, you know, so that there's, there's that piece, there are the HR business partners who, um, you know, the way that my organization is, there's kind of, you know, one assigned to kind of every different vertical. So, you know, each of them has kind of a slightly different perspective of what the folks within their, their organization, you know, might need or are looking for. Um, you know, I think the, you know, there's a handful of other kind of departments that all kind of, I report up through a people success team. Um, but there's, you know, there's the learning team under that there's talent management, which tends to be a little bit more focused on like the performance management of things. Um, so they're, they're often a really strong partner. Um, we have like an employee experience team that also kind of thinks about, you know, just overall experience, experiential things. Um, yeah, so it, it does kind of come from like a few different, a few different corners. Um, yeah, I think, I think sometimes it's difficult for, like, if you haven't been in a space before, right, like, you're fairly new to the tech space and, like, getting up to speed on who, <laughs> who are the people I'm even interacting with, um, you know, what do I need to learn, where do I need to get up to speed, like, even in just what you mentioned, there's so many different pieces, how did it feel coming into such a new space, like, where did you feel like you needed to really get up to speed or you were maybe like feeling less confident about what you know and what you're bringing to the table. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. And I, you know, part of this is that, you know, there are a lot of edges, edges and corners to, to my work compared to other people's uh, or other departments. And so, you know, there is, um, there is a lot of kind of, uh, personal onus, I guess, to, to find those folks and, uh, you know, to re reach out and make those connections. Um, you know, I think in, in higher education, it tends to be fairly siloed and everybody kind of knows their, um, you know, they stay in their lane, I guess. And, uh, I would say here, um, you know, the, the, there's some of those lines are a little blurry and some of those actually need to kind of merge together in certain ways. And so a lot of it is being proactive about, you know, kind of building con your connections um, and building your network within the organization pretty quickly. And, you know, I think the other challenge is being at a fully remote organization, you know, we're not kind of just like meeting each other in the hallways uh, or, you know, connecting in, in various places. Like you have to be really, um, you have to be really mindful about like, how do you, how do you build those connections? And I think for me, when I started, it was, you know, kind of, they were starting to kind of the list of people that my manager suggested I start to get to know quickly. And my, you know, my first question, or I guess it was my last question of every meeting was who else do I need to talk to? Who else is going to be a beneficial person to get to know? So it sounds like, you know, making a lot of um, new connections and relationships with people and learning about just like what they were doing, their experience at the company like how that intersects with your work. Yeah. 
Yeah. I always think about too, when you start a new job, like you're always going to have to get up to speed on something, right? Sometimes people feel nervous about that, but like you wouldn't be taking a new job if, if you weren't getting up to speed on something. But on the flip side, you can always bring something to the table where you do feel really confident that you can add value and like hit the ground running. Where do you feel like you came in and you were like, I feel, I feel really confident about like this one piece and I'm just going <laughs> to hit the pavement doing, doing that while I get up to speed on this other stuff. I think, you know, to me, this is almost, yes, there are absolute things that you can, you can do. And I think, but I, you know, I, I feel really lucky that my manager set me up for success early of one of the things we think about here is um, in our onboarding process is, you know, how to set a quick win for a new employee. Um, you know, how do you find a, a project that's, you know, maybe lower hanging fruit, but that's going to feel like it's going to connect people, you know, connect them with the right people early. It's going to get them feeling excited and motivated about their work that they're doing. Um, and just, uh, you know, really start them off on the right foot. And so I had a great opportunity to kind of uh, overhaul our um, onboarding, like e-learnings when I first came on board. And so it was a really good opportunity. I had to do a lot of feedback conversations with, you know, all sorts of different departments. We had a lot of, um, you know, contributions from other places. So it was a really nice opportunity for me to just like dive right in and, and start meeting people and connecting with people and, um, you know, pushing something out. Um, pretty quickly. But I think, you know, that would be, even if that's not something that is established uh, by a manager, I think that's a great question for somebody to be asking right away in a new role is like, you know, what's a project that you think that I can make impact on within my first, you know, month even, um, where something that I can move the needle uh, really quickly um, and, and get a kind of a quick win under my belt. I love that. What do you, what do you think that quick win, like how does it impact somebody who just builds their confidence? For sure builds confidence. I think it, you know, it helps, it helps me feel like I was productive immediately, um, that I wasn't, you know, just kind of dragging things down for a few months while I got onboarded. It, it helped me really feel like I um, was contributing to the team. And I think it helps me get to know more people quickly uh, so that I kind of felt really integrated um, as quickly as I could. Uh, you know, I didn't have to wait around until it was a good time to schedule just a, a catch up. It was, you know, I actually have some asks of, of somebody or uh, a request to make. Um, and so, you know, I think it kind of just got those ends a little bit faster. Okay, cool. And when we think about program management in the learning and development space, like it is so vast. <laughs> there are so many things you could be working on doing, implementing, refining, right? Um, what do you, what is something that you're excited about in this, just like in this space in general that you see happening? My personal growth area is, you know, just being, um, making more data-driven decisions. I think coming from higher education, like there's, you know, there are obviously plenty of things to track, but it is not always easy to see like a tangible, you know, I increased this you know, I increased X metric from, you know, point A to point B um, that, you know, that was a little harder to measure. And I think that was a big expectation in tech. Um, at least it is in my organization is to really be, you know, be able to come in, come in and show the value of your work. Um, and so to me, that's, you know, the things that I'm excited to start thinking about is like, what does that actually look like? How do I, how do I measure that? How do I, you know, how do I find um, success measures that are, are tangible and can, I can go back and report on after the fact. Um, you know, and I think the other, you know, I'm at, at a crypto company, I think there's, a, that's obviously just a huge, um, a huge exciting space to be in as well, just to, you know, this is, it's exploding industry. Um, there's something new, new to learn every day. Um, and so I think that's the other piece for me is just staying on top of that, um, in an industry that's growing so quickly. I guess the other thing I'm curious about as you were, as you were talking about, like some of the similarities and difference between higher ed and, and tech. You made this pivot into program manager role in tech, but were there <clears throat> were there other positions that you were thinking about that you felt like they could also be a good fit or positions that you're, now that you've kind of been in the environment, you're looking around to see some of the other roles that you think could be a natural um, next step from this role as well? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And I think, you know, coming through higher education, I kind of had a, you know, originally started out my career, you know, doing a lot of student life things. And then, um, you know, kind of took a pivot a couple years ago into more of the coaching aspect. Um, 
which you know was a, a really natural evolution, I think, at that stage for me. Um, but as I was kind of thinking about what was next, um, you know, I really had to kind of go back to say, what are the aspects of my work that I've done in the past that get me excited and that I think that I had the most value in? And ultimately, uh, you know, there there were a few different kind of angles I could have taken. There was kind of the event planning route. There was, you know, the engagement part, like the student engagement part. There was the student coaching or, you know, just leadership coaching in general piece I could have gone. So, you know, kind of, it was kind of just a little bit of like parsing out all of the various um, pieces of my career that I've, I've spent time and invested on and said like, you know, which of these do I want to focus on moving forward? Um, just, you know, coming into a large organization like this, um, you know, there is, it is a little bit more niche. There's, there's less people who are kind of a jack of all trades than I think you might see in, um, in higher education where people do have to wear multiple hats. Uh, so I, you know, to me, it was kind of just focusing in on, you know, what are the things that are most exciting and where do I think that I have the best transferable skills to be able to, to make that leap. Um, and for me, it was kind of in that program management piece um, where that it just kind of made the most sense. Um, in terms of like what I was prepared to um, bring from a skill set, skill set perspective, as well as, you know, prepared to jump right in, in a completely new environment. Yeah, I can totally see that from your background. Like when you're managing a program, like those skills are often transferable, very transferable, but also you had the experience in coaching and leadership development and, um, you know, that lends itself really well to thinking about developing managers within a company, right? Yeah. And any other roles now that you're within the organization, you can start to see like the org chart of people who have different kinds of titles. Are there other things you see where you're like, oh, it's really cool what they're doing? Like that seems interesting to me as well. Yeah, I like I would say like our employee experience and our workplace experience teams, like those those folks, I think, get to do a lot of fun stuff in terms of you know, that is a piece that I tend to miss is like that event planning aspect of it, of kind of like feeling that big energy. Um, and so, you know, those folks get to do a little bit more of that. So that's always kind of a, uh, like, oh, that looks like, that, that looks like it could be really fun and interesting. Yeah. Well, I love that distinction too, because, you know, like when I think about my experience in program management, like I'm much more like strategy operations process. So I would like to spend more time you know, kind of like in the nuts and bolts of things, but like planning an event sounds like my worst nightmare. So like there's a space for everybody, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And, you know, and I think it, yeah, like that kind of space. And I think that's, that's a big part of why, you know, as I was making this career pivot was, you know, what are the things that kind of bring me energy on a longer term thing versus what are the kind of things that like bring a little bit of a spike, but are, are not super consistent. And that was a piece for me that I enjoyed doing it, but it was, um, it was very draining. And so in terms of, um, you know, having kind of a more consistently, uh, you know, pushing myself, but not overwhelming myself, um, you know, kind of straying away from that side, I think was a good, tra good transition for me, at least at this point. Well, I would love to end with uh, one final question. I'm, you know, a big proponent of connecting with with others in your career. Obviously, we're connecting right now, so I can learn from you. Um, who are who would you be interested in connecting with if if people wanted to reach out? You know, I was very grateful for a couple of people who, you know, who who both showed me that it was possible and encouraged me that this was not an unreasonable move to make as I was thinking about the transition from higher education into, into tech. Um, I think it, you know, it, it was a little bit overwhelming and scary to, to think about that. Um, and so I, I was very grateful for a couple of people who had made that leap already to say like, nope, this is possible and it, you can do it. And, uh, you know, it, that's not, it doesn't have to be that scary. Um, so anybody who's considering that, I am, I'm more than happy to chat chat through my kind of thought process and you know kind of how that that went for me um and you know I think ultimately like I landed where I was because of you know because of my network um as much as I would love to say that it was you know I I had the right resume for the right job and it was a matter of submitting it and it was super straightforward like it's never like that ultimately and um you know I I made enough connections and maintained a few connections long term um which was which was how I ended up here was 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 a some someone I met like more than 10 years ago who 
you know, had stayed with enough in touch that it was, you know, was happy to take my call and was happy to vouch for me and was happy to say like, yep, this person, you can, you can take a, take a leap of faith on this person, even though she's coming from a different space. So anybody who I guess is uh, thinking about, you know, maintaining a, a network or, or things like that. I... That's good. Yeah. I'll always take a plug for informational interviewing and networking and building relationships because yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's most often the best way to get a job. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing your experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me.